When an object moves back and forth between two points repeatedly, we say it's oscillating. And the time it takes to complete one back and forth oscillation is the period of the motion. Remember, for that motion to occur, there must be a restoring force to get it to return to some equilibrium position. So we might have something like a spring, where we stretch out the spring, we let it go, and it tries to go back to its unstretched length, but then it passes it. So then it's compressed and it tries to go back and it just keeps repeating. So one back and forth is Always a variable force? Um, yes, because the closer you get to that equilibrium point, it's going to be less force because it, want, it doesn't want to be very strong because it knows it's really close. Kind of so if we have like a pendulum and then we have like those potential energy graphs, then, then we can like indicate how far it will go up and down because it can't go in. So I was going to go between those two points. So simple harmonic motion. So when a restoring force is linear, the object will undergo a special type of oscillatory motion that we call simple harmonic motion. Any linear restoring force will produce a simple harmonic motion. And a linear restoring force is a force that is linear proportional to the displacement. So we have something like spring force. So the more it's displaced, the more it's stretched out, the more force is being applied. Then more force is being applied. Yep. What are some examples of non-harmonic motion, non-simple harmonic motion? Uh, double pendulum. Triple pendulum. <laughs> Chaos pendulum. So pendulum does have simple harmonic motion. So just one, uh, like one thing moving, it would, yes. something and then you're like, like that and it's rotating about a point, will that be also simple harmonic motion? Kind of. Um, or like in terms of the orbit, there's like going. But through. the equilibrium point can never be reached. Because the equilibrium point would be like this, but if it's going around, it's never getting, going past that equilibrium point ever. 
So that's why it's circular motion. It wouldn't be simple harmonic then. It has to be able to go through that equilibrium and keep going and then try and return. It keeps trying to go back. Well, that's when we get into chaos. Do we do chaos by all of this class? No. Chaos? Not even computers can do chaos. <laughs> Supposedly, there was a, a supercomputer out there that has been trying to predict uh, a pendulum, a, a chaos pendulum, and it ran over like three trillion simulations, and it cannot predict what the next one would be just by running it. So is there no predictable pattern? That's the idea. And so like with the pendulum, it's, it's linear, the restoring force is linear, like which direction is the restoring force? So it always tries to go towards the equilibrium point, which would be straight down. So the force would be going this way. So it would be the component of gravity trying to pull it down. Okay. So it's not like compared to the ground, is it like perpendicular to the ground, or is it just like that pulling towards? It's diagonal and it keeps kind of changing point towards that right spot. That straight down. Like okay, so, so it like goes like this. Yeah. Okay, so position with a simple harmonic oscillator. So we have an equation that we can use to find position. Basically, what this equation tells us is if we take the amplitude which is the maximum displacement of, from the equilibrium, times cosine of the angular frequency times the time, we can actually get our position. So if we have something like here, I have this spring hanging from the ceiling and it's going up and down. If I were to say at two seconds, where is it? We can actually calculate that out. We know the amplitude, well, the amplitudes, and if we figure out the frequency, then we can actually solve for the position at that time. So angular frequency is just gonna be two pi over the period, or it would be two pi times the frequency. Usually we use the two pi over the period. <clears throat> One more. This was on the equation sheet last year on the review for SM simple harmonic motion, and you told me not to use that equation. But it made the problem so much easier last year. It was on the review, but not on the formula card. Because I think we hadn't gotten that point. We don't. We didn't. Yeah, so that's why. Yeah, I like it was accidentally on there. We didn't dig it off the net. Why is it called angular? Like that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so it's angular frequency because it is. We're talking about. It's going through these curves, right? So it's a cosine graph. And so what we want to know is how often it, we know it's going to repeat it. It's repeating here, right? So it's angular frequency because it's kind of going around these curves and frequency is, well, period is, oh, let me see like this. Period is how long it takes to go one full back and forth. Frequency is what? How far it goes in one second. So this is going to be um, angular frequency. It's because it's going around this curve per second, like per one second. It's kind of where that's coming from. It's like how far around this does it go? And we get, it's harder to see with a spring because it's just going up and down, but with like a, a pendulum, it makes more sense because we see the it's going in a circular path. So we would have an angular velocity, which 
is one book. So that's what I catch on. Can make that kind of makes sense. Let's see if you can solve it. What type of curve would that follow? It's impossible to determine. Oh, that's one of the impossible things we want. We should predict. There's a lot of CSs on this where you can make them make a computer. You can't even have a You say that like it's an easy thing to do. Okay, so here's an example. We have an object that moves in simple harmonic motion with its position as a function of time. So the position function is 3 times cosine pi times time. So the first part, what is the amplitude of the motion? 3. 3. So whatever's in front of the cosine, that is your amplitude. Just easy enough. Amplitude is 3. Next, what distance will the object travel in one full period of the motion? Five. So, well, one full period, one full back and forth. Oh, so, so if it goes... Uh, I don't know, Would we take the opposite of that? Pi equals oh, two pi over two. Would we take the opposite of that from zero to two? Would we take the opposite of that from zero to two? It wouldn't be two. Minus so it would be sure with the integral of the square root of one minus f. What? Wait, no, it'd be one plus. It'd be one plus. Yeah. One plus f of t, f prime t squared. Because it is. So, do we know? Oh, oh, let me say it like this. The amplitude is three, right? So it goes up three, down three. Down another three, back up three. Mm. Oh, so, so how zero. far does it travel? Zero. Well, the displacement zero, but what's the distance? Twelve. Three, six, nine, twelve. So how far it travels in one full period? It's going to be twelve. Wait, I wouldn't use this arc length of the function. If you think about it, I was trying to like solve it. It's just graphing the Because arc length. That's the, the actual thing isn't moving in a curve, it's just moving back yeah. and forth. Yeah, yeah, the object's not moving in a curve. Oh, oh yeah, because the object is now, oh, down three. Yep. Okay, and the last part, what is the period of the motion? So we know how far it travels in one period. We know that, <coughs> what is pi in this case? What was in that formula? Well, other than that. 2 pi over t. So 2 pi over t. So we're going to use 2 pi over t is equal to pi. So 2 pi over t. So t is 2. 2 pi over t is equal to pi. So therefore, t is 2 pi over pi, which is 2. So the period is 2 seconds. That's why. You could think of it. <laughs> Any questions on this one? So really the thing is, if you're given a position equation like that, being able to break it down into amplitude, the distance it travels in one period, and what is that period? <laughs> So, next thing we need to talk about is velocity of a simple harmonic oscillator. So, this is the thing we need to do with ATC that's a little different. So, velocity is, remember, the derivative of position with respect to time. And so, when we plug it into, we take the derivative of our equation we just got, we would have negative times the, or negative, the amplitude, times one bow, sine, or cosine becomes sine, and then we have one bow t in it. 
So we take, if we take the derivative of the cosine, we get negative sine. And so that's how we get that. And then we pull out that inside. Yeah. We also know that with sine, what is the the bounds of the sine function? Negative one. Negative one and one. So we know we can't exceed that. So that means that if we can't exceed it, the maximum velocity has to equal basically the a times omega, and omega is 2 pi over the period. So we could just say the velocity maximum of this function is going to equal the amplitude times 2 pi over the period. Because it makes sense if it's going very fast, the period is going to be very small. If it's covering a big distance, it has a huge amplitude. Well, if we have something that's covering a huge amplitude, big distance, and something that's covering a very small distance, and they're oscillating at the same period, which one has to be moving faster? Big distance. The one that has a big distance. Because to get to have that same period, it has to move faster to get through that distance. So we end up, basically, we just the maximum velocity is amplitude times 2 pi over the period. <coughs> so we also have acceleration. So we find acceleration by differentiating the velocity function. So if we differentiate the velocity function, we get <coughs> negative amplitude times omega squared times cosine of omega times time. Now we can kind of do something similar with the maximum acceleration. Since we know cosine, once again, can only be between 1 and negative 1, we can just take the, the front part of that. So the amplitude times omega squared. So the maximum acceleration has to be the amplitude times omega squared. And if that's the case, knowing that this entire function is actually equal to um, the negative omega squared times our position function, then, because acceleration times position, or displacement, I should say. And then uh, we would say the Acceleration with respect to time is equal to negative omega squared times the position function. So the big thing from this slide is, is the acceleration max. What about that one? This is a little overkill. Hey, five. I get switch for <laughs> I don't like that. I need to zoom in in the most practical way. The only problem with the zoom in, it has to be something kind of small. Because if I were to try and do it, like, I can't get that whole slice. There's no way. Like, maximum picks up the whole thing. This way is a huge Just go, like, line by line. Wait, do the title. I don't like zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, uh, what? You should make someone read while you're doing that. That'd be funny. I think it's like a 50% zoom or something like that. I can change it, but. There's so many personalities. Okay. Is that show? For the t shirt design this year, can you put a spherical cow? Wait, no, we designed the t shirt. I don't know. Yeah, you draw it in. Like, you can't have a. You gotta come up with an idea. And not a spherical And then tell a lot. And then she'll draw. And my spherical cow that's being hit with. I actually have a, quite a few artists here. So. We should make At least one of the lights in the
Yeah. It depends on how much you pay the artist. <laughs> See, I always come up with some idea, but the only one of mine that ever actually won was the first one. But that was because of Avengers Endgame. So on the back it actually says, uh, we survived the snap. Uh, what's the second one? The second one, our strength is that inversely proportional to distance. And then what's the equations around. Yeah, I had to change a few things because there were too many colors and it would have cost a lot. And then the last one we decided to go with less colors. Or the next one we went with less colors, but we went with two different colored shirts. So you could choose the shirt color. And then last year's, it had just so many colors on there that I had to uh, do a little different. But it works. And so that's why that's Granted, she wanted the original. Do you know what the original is? Physics. Oh, without the, the physics is spelled wrong. Right? Yeah, she spelled physics wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and so, because she designed it, I decided to make her a special edition one, so I have like the original where it's spelled wrong. <laughs> so there's a special edition one out there. Just gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> now she's walking around a college campus with a physics spell. She's here. Well, she'll be walking around a college campus with a shirt that has physics spells around. I wore a physics shirt and like a pink one, and it was physics. Oh, I'm like, I completely look over there. Okay, so how do we relate position, velocity, and acceleration? So we did this in AP1 where we saw the displacement graph, velocity graph, and acceleration graph. Remember, displacement and velocity are, it's kind of shifted down a little bit. You could think of it as displacement and acceleration are just mirrored over the x-axis. So velocity is kind of the only weird one. As long as you know displacement or acceleration, you know what the shape of the other one was. Are those supposed, so, to, supposed to be the same? They're the same. Yeah, but they're, they're stretched more. Yeah, they're just, the y doesn't actually have values on it, so they're stretched a little bit more. Yeah. But they all have the same uh, situation. So when x is at its maximum, velocity is zero. So we just got to remember when we're at our amplitude, there is no velocity. It stops for a moment. When we're at our equilibrium point, our displacement is zero, but we're moving the fastest. When our displacement is zero, when we're at an amplitude, it's changing direction. So that's when our acceleration is the highest. So that's how we get the sine of x and a are always opposite. Because it's about to change direction. So one of them is negative, the other one's positive. It has to be able to change direction. Yeah. This was <laughs> I feel like there's some plotting going on over here. No, it's Which just that last year the TI Inspire came to collection this unit because I could just do menu 4, 1, K of X, and now it just give me the function. Don't ask. Please don't ask. Well, it's, I know what he's talking about. Yeah, it's still, just don't encourage me. Wait, well, see, that's these, why, you know, we should just ban the Inspire on no, all of our tests so that he has to use an 84 and see what he does. Wait, that's the only calculator I have at this no, point. I don't know how to use it, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hold on. You have to use 30 then. No, those things suck. Those do suck. Those, those are, like, use. worse than bad. <laughs> do we have to memorize all these equations? Like, philosophy? No, they're all, uh, <laughs> The TI Inspire... Oh, you suck. Oh, you suck. 
It literally is running a Linux system in the background. Really? I love it. It's got a whole file system in it. It's a folder. No, you don't. I can hack into it. Oh, yeah. Wait, who said that? I did. Get away from me. Janice, we made gold here. <laughs> okay, how many people in our class make classes? I don't know. But I think everyone made gold. Just because we're both I'm not talking about in the country, I'm talking about in your class. <laughs> I know that you say everyone made their goals. Which is a little disappointing. Okay. So, mass on a spring. So, normally, we will focus on a spring with a mass attached to it. So, in AP Physics C, the problems that you'll see 99% of the time. <coughs> Are going to be a mass attached to a spring. You both have pendulums? We do, but it's a very small amount. Literally, like 1% of the time. Oh. It's mostly masses on springs. Similar to AP1, but in AP1, there was a little bit more pendulums. Mm -hmm. So, I'll put it this way you might have one or two problems on the actual exam of a pendulum. You know what? We can make, you know those giant hamster balls? wrap somebody inside and make a giant spring pendulum with it and then they'll go all over the place. Why don't that just picture like a giant pinball machine? <laughs> that would also be <laughs> <laughs> Once you get an extra. <laughs> no, we only let them out if they successfully solve what their simple <laughs> motion is. Yeah. Give them a uh solve the cap the problem that they have to do while they're in the ball. They can't solve it, they can't get out of it. They're just stuck there. They need to okay. solve the recon. So, with springs, guys, remember the spring force equation is equal to kx. So, it can produce simple harmonic motion. We combine Newton's second law with Hooke's law. So, we know second law is F equals ma. Hooke's law is kx. So, we can plug that in there. We know it's a restoring force, so that's why I have a negative there. Um, but then if we're going to solve for the acceleration, we divide both sides by mass, and, and we get an acceleration equation. We get negative k, basically negative kx over the mass. And this actually looks identical to the equation the last slide. So here we have Acceleration is negative 1 both squared x, but 1 both squared is equal to k over m. So really we end up with the same equation for acceleration. So this is why we normally stick with masses on springs, because instead of having to deal with this, we just got to deal with that. It makes it a lot easier. What's up? Why is it negative kx? So remember the spring force equation is always a restoring force. So when it's down here, the force is going to be up. When it's up here, the force is down. So the negative is just kind of a direction of whatever that force is at a moment. So you don't really, the negative is there, but it doesn't need to be there. It depends on the position of the mass. So like if it's down here, the force is up, it's positive. If it's up here, the force is down, it's negative. So it's only negative whenever it's the force is in the negative direction. Yeah. It's basically saying like it oscillates between negative and positive. Yeah. This example is just whenever the force is negative. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to write Because think of it this way too. If you square a negative number, you always get a positive value, right? Omega squared is k over m. So even if this was negative, we squared it becomes positive anyway. So doesn't really matter if it's negative. Um, it's just how it is on the formula chart. Usually it's just telling you it's a restoring force because it can change directions. Yeah. In a spring that had two directions, I'm supposed to do two directions at the same time. Like, <laughs> like stretch and compress at the same time? No, but like if you have like an X, X, Y, Z axis and the spring is at the top of the Z axis, it moves from like one quadrant of the X, Y and then moves horizontally. So you're saying a spring pendulum? 
So taking the equation of the previous slide, omega squared is equal to k over m. If we substitute in omega is equal to 2 pi over the period, do a little bit of rearranging, we get this. Does this look familiar? It's the period of the spring equation. So kind of the reason why we had that equation, in AP1 we were just like, yep, here's the period of the spring equation. Don't got to worry about where it's coming from, that's just what it is. So the reason where it actually comes from is because of the graphic mix. Is all the calculus we did to go all the way down to be able to get omega, and then we ended up with our period of spring. So remember, this is I from my chart as well. So two pi times the square root of the mass over the period. And remember, for springs. Does gravity matter? No. No. So it doesn't matter where the object is. If it's on a different planet, it's on the moon, if it's somewhere in space, it's still going to oscillate. Just with the same theory. Even if it's a horizontal spring. Like a spring yes. attached to the root. So you mean vertical spring? That's yeah, vertical. <laughs> yeah. It's the last thing, period. The amplitude might change, but this equation is the same. Oh, it's going to have the same period. Same period. Yes. The same the yes, the amplitude would change because now there's not the effect of gravity stretching it as much as it would. Are we going to have those problems? problems? Uh, yeah. no, because it would never be like that. They'd probably give you the position equation, position as a function of time, and then you might need this to find the period, and then you can actually find what the new amplitude is if you really needed to, but. If you're given the equation, it's in the equation. Okay. So. That was on the FRP last year. Like it's just an FRP number four, not the five. Okay. Yeah, I, I know there's one I got to That was the most fun one. You had to make a graph. Okay. So here's an example, guys. We have a mass hanging from a spring that oscillates with its position as a function of give, uh, time given by x me, equals 2 cosine pi times time. The spring constant of the spring is found to be 50 newtons per meter. What is the mass hanging from the spring? So we need to figure out what that mass is. Well, first, we know that the period function of a spring is 2 pi times the square root of mass over the spring constant. Well, all we know right now, do we know the period? Yes, what's the period? Two. Two. Do we know the spring constant? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So plug in the 50 and plug in that 2. And we're going to solve here. So we got to, we got that square root we got to get rid of and we're going to solve for the mass here. So we get rid of that square root. We're down to uh, 1 over pi, that entire thing squared, because we divide 2 by both sides. Uh, 2 pi, I should say. And then we're going to solve the mass. So when we solve the mass, we get, well, 1 over pi squared is equal to what? Yeah, just 1 over pi squared. <laughs> I said that weird. I was like, wait. Yeah, so 1 over pi squared. So then that equals the mass over the 50. We can do some cross multiplying to get mass by itself. And, oh, we can just, I mean, multiply both sides of the 50 over And then we get a mass of 5.07 kilograms. Yeah, sometimes. So a 
lot of times we given the equation for position, then they'll ask things like what is the amplitude of this function? They'll ask what is the period? They may ask something like this, what was the mass that's hanging on that spring? The last thing I want to mention is a note. Newton's second law equation for simple harmonic motion, if we use Newton's second law equation to rearrange for acceleration, we get negative omega squared times that position function. And any system which obeys an equation of this form will behave like a simple harmonic oscillator. So if you ever see an equation that looks something like that, so acceleration is equal to negative angular velocity squared times position, that will always be a simple harmonic oscillator. Always be something oscillating. And that period of oscillation is always period is equal to 2 pi over omega. So we talk about this a little bit more when we get into rotations, but we do got to talk about it in simple harmonic time. So, any questions on that? I tend to like switch off between them, and I don't know why. Like, I'll say Wumbo, and then I'll just go to like Omega just randomly. I don't know why he's switching. We gotta go with the new one. I mean, we got Omega, Wumbo, but we gotta come up with like a different funny name for another variable. Not for that one, I'm talking about for something else. Fishy. Fishy. For Alpha. What, what's the funniest looking variable in the second semester? We should change Mew, because I don't like it. I like Mew. 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 It's Mew. Mew. Holmes? Mew of your shoe lab. Or density that has the weird P? Lambda. Uh, no. That's not that. Not that. It's like a P, but it's like, it's real. Oh, yeah. It's weird. I bought this notebook. Okay, guys. So I do have a practice for you guys in one minute. Tomorrow I do have a, uh, a little lab we'll be doing.